Did you know that at the time of recording, if you go to Google and search for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, this button will appear at the bottom of the page. And if you click it, Chocobos from Final Fantasy VII will run across the screen. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Video Game Easter Eggs, the series where we take a look at the latest and not so latest Easter eggs found in video games. Now, the character intros in the past couple of Mortal Kombat games have been packed with references. I mean, they're definitely low hanging fruit, with most of them being very obvious, but it's still cool to see something that you love being referenced in a game. A couple of weeks ago, DC character Peacemaker was added to Mortal Kombat 1 and was even voiced by the man who can't be seen, John Cena, who of course played Peacemaker in the 2021 Suicide Squad movie and the Peacemaker TV show. In fact, the first character introduction that we're going to look at references that very same show. If Peacemaker fights Johnny Cage, there's a chance that they will say this. The things I could do with your life story. How about we make it a streaming series? So Johnny suggests that they turn the story of Peacemaker into a streaming series, which is exactly what happened in real life. The other two Peacemaker references are both nods to the 2021 Suicide Squad movie. First up, when Peacemaker faces off against Smoke, this might happen. You fight for peace. And I'll kill anyone I have to to get it. So Peacemaker saying that he will kill anyone for peace is a nod to this hilarious line from the movie. They call you Peacemaker. I cherish peace with all my heart. I don't care how many men, women, and children I need to kill to get it. Finally, if Peacemaker fights Kung Lao, this intro can take place. The Peacemaker? Ha! <laughs> what a joke. It won't be once I shove that hat up your ass. So Kung Lao saying, Peacemaker, what a joke, is a reference to this scene. Peacemaker. What a joke. Like I said, these references are very much low-hanging fruit, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy them. Now, before you skip to the next chapter, because you think that House Flipper 2 Easter eggs might be boring, wait just a minute. Granted, the Easter eggs that I've managed to find in the extremely addictive decorating simulator aren't going to win any end-of-year awards, but one of them in particular is kind of funny. Before that, though, let's take a look at an Easter egg that can be found in your HQ. When you arrive, you're left with loads of unwanted junk that you will need to get rid of. This this even includes post-it notes, but one of the post-it notes may look familiar. This particular note that is kind of hidden away is a reference to Among Us, which pretty much created the word sus, or at least that's what it feels like. Now this House Flipper 2 Easter egg is the one that I found quite funny. One of the jobs that you can take on sees you heading to a house by the beach. On the table outside of the house is a book called Wild Ride, which is part of the Bewitcher trilogy. The book tells the story of Yerl of Tibia and the beautiful enchantress Jennifer. That's spelt with a G by the way, so it could actually be Genifer. Anyway, this book is an obvious parody of the Witcher series, with Yerl being Geralt and Jennifer being the lovely Yennefer. Hopefully, I'm not the only one that found this a little bit funny. Right, it's now time for our overused video game Easter egg of the week. The segment where we take a look at one Easter egg that has been referenced to death in video games. Today's Easter egg can be found in survival game Enshrouded. After leaving the caves at the beginning of the game, you can find the familiar sight of a sword in a bonfire, which, as we all know by now, is a reference to the Dark Souls series. Be sure to join me next time for another overused video game Easter egg of the week. So, the postal games have always had some really out there Easter eggs. And with that in mind, this Easter egg that I found in Postal 4 is probably one of the more tamer secrets hiding in the game. Above the map, you can see a hot air balloon, and if we use no clip, we can fly up to the balloon to see what's inside. Now, as far as I'm aware, there is no story related reason for this doll to be up here but I haven't completed the Postal 4 story yet, so I could be wrong. Still, I'm guessing someone is missing their blow-up doll, and this probably is the last place they would think to look. So, we have covered the super addictive Punch Club 2 on this channel before. 
I mean, the game is full of Easter eggs, so it would be a surprise if we hadn't. Anyway, a location that we didn't visit in my previous videos is the nightclub, which is home to not one, not two, but three familiar faces, or maybe even more. I mean, the people that I recognize are Sub-Zero, who is tending the bar, Gogo Yubari from the excellent Kill Bill Volume 1, and the person on stage is a reference to Bruce Lee. That's all the people that I recognise. If you can spot anyone that I might have missed, then please let me know in the comments. So the Halo series has always had some really cool Easter eggs, and we have covered a lot of them on this channel before. Saying that, Halo 5 is definitely a blind spot for me, so let's change that today. First up, if you interact with the vending machine on the Meridian Station mission 10 times, suddenly there are more important things to do than save the human race. Machine's buttons seem to be in order. Will you look at that? Used to play a fair bit of football in my day. Bring it on, old man. Let's see who can score first. So a giant football will spawn that you can push around the level. And yes, you can score a goal then. Goal! Go, 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 go! All right, Osiris. Playtime's over. Let's get on with it. The other Halo 5 Easter egg takes a bit of work. Well, more work than pushing a button 10 times, put it that way. If you play the game's first mission on the legendary difficulty, seven knives will spawn. Shooting a knife will cause it to light on fire. Now, I won't share all of the locations here. One, because I doubt many of you will be desperate to try out an Easter egg from a game that is fast approaching nine years old. And two, it would take too long. So instead, I'll leave a link to a guide in the description. Anyway, if you shoot the final knife at the end of the level, you might get more than you bargained for. Now, if you've never played Halo 5, you might wonder what changed. Well, for a start, shooting the final knife will give you the Prophet's Bane, a super rare energy sword, along with camo, meaning that you're now invisible. Not only that, but an extra large Promethean Knight and Warden Eternal will spawn in the room with you, with the Warden Eternal being a real pain in the ass to kill. Oh, and just for reference, this is the size of a normal Warden Eternal. So if you've ever played a game on PC, you might have found yourself fiddling around in the game's files. It's almost like a rite of passage for anyone that prefers to play on PC. Well, in the files of Helldivers 2, you can find the user settings document that can be edited to change various options in game. Scrolling through the document and everything appears as it should be, though this customer survey does stand out. Well, if we copy the YouTube link, which will apparently take us to the customer survey, we are instead taken to exactly where you think. That's right. Hidden in the user settings of Helldivers 2 is a link to the Rick Astley classic Never Gonna Give You Up. It's brilliant. The other Helldivers 2 easter egg isn't as cool as Rick, but then again, not much is. When fighting off invading forces, you may find yourself on a snowy planet. Now of course, the mission takes priority, but if you crouch in a patch of deep snow, eventually a prompt will appear giving you the option to make a snowball which unless you're a madman, you will definitely do. Now, granted, the snowball doesn't damage the super dangerous robots found on this particular planet, but it's still a cool, pun intended, Easter egg. Now, before you go, I just need to get something off my chest. It's been a tricky couple of weeks for me. The last two videos performed badly and I kind of expected it. They weren't my best work. I think sometimes you can get caught up in the day-to-day -day grind of life and end up just going through the motions that you kind of forget the reasons that you do what you do. And in my case, I do what I do because it puts a roof over my family's head, but also because I really enjoy finding cool things in games. Ultimately, I just want to make sure that we're all on the same page. I'm not Watch Mojo or some other top 10 YouTube channel. I'm just a guy who likes easter eggs and cool details. That's it. The videos that I make are a reflection of that. I won't include something in a video if I don't like it. Anyway, thanks for listening to me ramble. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. As always, thank you all for watching and I'll speak to you all soon.